This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust out your eyes. Today we're going to do something kind of different. Okay. We got a good friend, a citizen of the show. A lot of people know him through his affiliation with the legendary Roots crew. Right. I know him for that reason, but also I know him as just being an excellent MC that comes to shred mics anytime you invite him to, and he'll do it in a three-piece suit. <laughs> the one and only Dice Raw is here, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, how you guys doing? Thank you for having me, Sway, Heather, Tracy. I'm, you know, Wonder, what's up? Uh, okay, that's what's up. And Dice, you brought a colleague of yours, Mr. Phil Brown, is here as well, right? That's yeah, true. how you doing, Sway? Doing okay, Heather, Tracy, Phil. Nice to be here. Welcome Good to the to show, you. man. Thank you, brother. Well, man, man. Uh, where here. you from, Phil? I'm from Philly. You're from Philly? It's a yeah, Philly connection, Philly. huh? Yeah, this is all Philly right here. All Ishka Bibbles, <laughs> right? Oh, right? my yeah. gosh, those cheesesteaks, the fish one. They're banging, yeah. right? Yeah. Delicious. Yeah. Dice Raw has done a lot of work with The Roots, and he's done a lot of work on his own and uh, got his own record company, Independent Label. And, um, and back in, I want to say 2013, Right is when uh, the the album um, Jimmy's Back came out. Right. Yes. Yes. It yes. was 2013, yeah. and and that album, as we were talking about, uh, was influenced by a book, right, written oh, by yeah. Michelle Alexander, yep. called The New Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, a friend of mine gave me the book uh, early 2013, and he said, "Yo, Dice, yo, you got to read this book." And I was like, you oh, know, okay. I don't really, you know, not to lie, I don't really read many novels on a regular basis. Uh -huh. He's like, yo, you really got to read this book. The sister wrote this book that outlines mass incarceration and the uh, reentry, which is when you get out of jail and you're coming back to the streets. So basically, what she's saying in the book is when you reenter, uh, you have a, a stigma that's attached to your name that is more uh, that has more prejudice and more repercussions than actual the Jim Crow laws, which was started. I believe early 1800s or late 1800s after slavery, yeah. and it actually went to 1960 until they were abolished. You know, 19, mm -hmm. or the late uh, mid 1960s. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. Where they were abolished, and this is all new to me. Talk about the Jim Crow laws, though. Well, what yeah, was? Jim Crow laws were basically set in place to keep blacks uh, from working, uh, just just barring us from civil rights, uh, mm -hmm. from being um, having the right to vote, vote yeah. having the right to work, having the right to um, uh, own land. land. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically taking away your civil liberties as as an American citizen, and um, and, and that was and that lasted for almost a hundred something years. Yeah, until uh, Thurgood Marshall, uh huh, Supreme yeah. Court Justice. Sup yeah, yeah, exactly. First African American mm -hmm. Supreme Court Justice. I mm -hmm. learned that in elementary. <laughs> <laughs> See, when we was in elementary, they wasn't teaching us that. They by the teacher, yeah. you that? No, right, no, okay, not at all. Not right, at all. all right, you yeah. know, in the eighties, they kind of in the in, in, um early nineties, they strayed away from teaching um. You know that those kind of um, facts in yeah. school. You know, mm -hmm. it, you know, as the world gets more colorblind uh, to basically what's going on. Well, you know, that's basically what Michelle talks about in her book as well. That racism is has a new face, yeah. and and certain things get swept under the rug because it's it's considered uh, things that are changing times. And oh, there is no more racism, but they found new ways to flip it and and, and balance it and and, and and lock people in, not just blacks but poor whites and poor Latinos uh -huh. too. Uh huh. They, they, they target, uh, I was reading about the book, uh, in this post-racial uh, um, era with President Obama, uh, they, you know, they, she talks about colorblindness and the new, the, the new way of targeting um, black men or poor whites is through the war, different ways, like war on drugs, right, Phil? Or, yeah, oh, yeah, war, definitely. War on, war on drugs, um, uh -huh. lack of education, you know, mm -hmm. you know, crumbling schools, you know, and, that, and that's where it starts. I mean, but if you really go back to how they put that whole construct together, introducing, you know, um, you know, the drugs and the alcohol into the to communities coupled with the lack of education, mm -hmm. you know, crumbles the family home. And now we have, you know, um, uh, you know, black children uneducated. We have um, fathers who've left the home, who is the high priest of the home, yeah. right? And and so and so the whole construct is messed up. And you put them out in in, in a culture that's that's you know, that's warring against them and they're trying to fill prison cells, you know, it's 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 a real bad mix. You know, it, it really there's more brothers locked up today, uh, in America than all the slaves to ever live in this country. I mean Damn, if you, if wait, you look hold up, at, say that again. There are more brothers incarcerated in America today than the number of slaves that uh, that we had in America. And you know, John Legend recently, after winning the um, Oscar for Best Original Song for Glory with with um, Common, Common, salute, 
had this to say Big ups. about that very issue. People are marching with our song. We want to tell you we are with you. We see you. We love you. And march on. God bless you. Yeah, that's, you know, that's powerful right there. Phil Very Brown powerful. is with us. Dice Rawl is with us. The New Jimmy is the name of the musical that's been. The Last Jimmy. The, excuse me. The, 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 the Last Jimmy is the name of the musical. New Jim Crow. Uh, the New Jim Crow is a book with Michelle Alexander. And Jimmy's Back is your album. And yep. The Last Jimmy was the musical right. that Phil wrote. Uh, about the album that you guys have been performing and going to do a clip of that for us today, right? Oh, yeah. All right, uh, so we're going to open up the phone lines. You guys want to chime in, 888-742-3345. Here's Clones by the Roots. Yo, Sway in the Morning. Yo, Dice Raw, what up, baby? (laughs) All right, this is really interesting. 33 minutes into the hour. We got Dice Raw here, you know, from the legendary Roots crew. Also, Phil Brown. uh, Phil, why don't I count? You're a writer, a playwright? I'm I'm a writer. I'm a writer, um, actor. Uh um, But but primarily a writer and actor. I'm also... uh, uh, director of Performing Arts at the Shipley School in Bryn Mawr. Okay. In Bryn Mawr, PA. But yeah. also, Phil, you came from Disney. You worked came at BT. He doesn't like the blows. Yeah, on. so <laughs> I wrote I wrote a show. Nah, so so check it out, Sway. I um I got my writing career started off as a young buck, man, you know, writing plays, et uh-huh. cetera. And um, wound up getting it, getting the job at uh, BET. I was co-creator of AM at BET. Uh-huh. I wrote for Laz Alonzo. Laz um, Alonzo, yeah, back in the day. Back in yeah. the day, when yeah. they moved 106 and Park from D.C. to uh, 106 and Park, I was like one of the first writers that came in and okay. uh, and wrote that show, the cross promotional show. Okay. And then from there, I went to L.A. Optioned some screenplays. Um, uh, was was punch up writer and, and uh, acting coach on two hit Disney shows. That's so Raven and Corey in the house. <laughs> Did he just do? <laughs> Two He's Disney a shows. Guy. He's the, a one, guy. the most successful show Disney has ever had. That's so Raven with the yeah. magnificent Raven Simone. No doubt. The and Raven you, Simone. Oh, man, yeah. Oh, you see her on Empire? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You see me on Empire? <laughs> yeah. Get him back, oh, get him back. Oh, oh, there you go. All right, all right. All right. So what we're talking yeah. about, uh, there was a book by written by Michelle Alexander called The New Jim Crow. And it it talked about race relations in this uh, in this country uh, that inspired a, a album called Jimmy's Back that was written by Dice Raw and uh, we were just talking about how there are more black men incarcerated now than there were slaves uh, centuries ago mm-hmm. uh, and so the new way the new war on black folks or poor whites or poor people is through uh, targeting the war on drugs education. Uh, so on and so forth, and you guys hit this musical called The New Jimmy. and The Last Jimmy. I, was, I keep saying The New Jimmy. Because <laughs> you want to say New Slave, I feel like. <laughs> you know, actually, you know what's funny about The Last slave? Jimmy. Yeah, you're not the only one. We actually, uh, we uh, we did a uh, collaboration uh, with Rennie Harris, uh-huh. who is a world-renowned choreographer, uh, hip-hop choreographer as well, yeah. dance. I mean, you know, he, he won an Obie Award, and one of his partners always calls it Little Jimmy. Okay, so he's like, "Thanks, we got to get little Jimmy going." Yeah, okay, yeah. little Jimmy. Okay, now nah, the, <laughs> the last Jimmy. Jimmy yeah. And so, how can people see this musical? Well, we we open up um, at the uh, the Prince Music Theater in in Philadelphia, uh, March eighteenth, nineteenth, twentieth, and twenty first at eight p.m. Okay, and um, it's it's presented by the Electric Factory mm-hmm. and, Bonfire and Bonfire Bonfire, and um, you know people can just go online and and you know you know Google the Last Jimmy. Philly, the Prince Music Theater, you know that all comes up, and it's 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 going to be it's going to be a big show. We're kicking it off in Philly. We have spot dates in other cities, but we're we're kicking it off in in Philly. Yeah. Oh, okay, I want you guys to perform a a, a a part, a piece, or should I say, scene from the musical momentarily. Okay. But right now we got uh, Paige on the line from Cali. Good morning, Paige. How you doing? Hey, Paige. Hey, how's it going? Good morning, Slee. Good morning, everybody. Doing all right. Yeah, uh, what's up, brother? Say hello to Dice Raw, Phil Brown, man. How you doing, bro? How's it going, gentlemen? Doing okay. What do you? What comment did you want to make? Oh no, it's on the Michelle Alexander book. I actually read the book. You know, I, we studied it in class. Um, what I wanted to talk about was the, uh, you know, the war on drugs. You know, you know, someone tells you that we start like America started the war on drugs. Oh talk, yeah, break that down. Well, what I mean is that you know, and uh, if you you can you actually Google this too. April fourteenth, nineteen eighty six, um, the Reagan administration put out a three page report saying that you know. Um, CIA supported Contras in their movement of drugs through throughout the world, meaning all over the United States and everywhere else. Yeah, uh, and and that's kind of what if you the real Rick Ross, you know, uh, that's what he since he's been out, 
you know, we've had him on the show a few times, and he was trying to let people know, hey, man, I didn't do this by myself. You know, I was supplied mm -hmm. by real government officials, uh, given the ability to spread drugs all around the country uh, and, and around the world. So, I mean, that's a reality about our country. It's a lot of realities we really don't touch on. Right, Dice Roth? Yeah, and that's the sad part because I think a lot of times people uh, in their minds, they don't think that any of this stuff could be that diabolical. Yeah. Or there's really a plan to keep black males down, poor Latinos, poor whites. People really think that that's fictitious, you know, uh -huh. and not even just, you know, uh, people in another class or people of a different um, a color or nationality, but even our own people. You yeah. know, they say, mm -hmm. well, there's no way that mm -hmm. they're doing that to us. They're like, any black man could be a millionaire. All he has to do is just get his life together and straighten up and walk that straight, narrow path. And to a certain degree, that's right, but that's not always correct. And there are different things. And the war on drugs has is, is, is been a tool of the United States, not just since the 80s, but... Was, they used it against the Chinese, building the railroads and mm -hmm. opium. There was a war on opium. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a reefer, reefer madness. You know, yeah. I mean, there was all these different points in times of history where the powers that be used these tools and you know divert people into prisons, divert people into um, divert children in an orphanage. I mean, just think about what they're doing to children. Like Phil mentioned earlier with the education. Yeah, uh, it costs. What what is it, Phil? It's uh, it's eighty eight thousand dollars a year to incarcerate. I'm incarcerate somebody. A 12-year-old to 18-year-old is they spend twelve thousand dollars to educate that same kid. Yeah, the best school in Pennsylvania is well thirty-five thousand dollars. Thirty-five thousand dollars a year. A year. Yeah. yeah. So we're 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 spending double to incarcerate a child or what it costs to educate two. To educate two. Wow, that's. You be putting doing the math at the B. Yeah, I am, and it makes me curious. Sway always c tells a story about how growing up in Oakland, he felt and he kind of knew there was a plan to stop feeding young children breakfast oh, in the yeah. mornings. You oh, know, yeah. just so they stopped mm. the food programs. And so now we move forward to 2015 as men, as successful men. Mm -hmm. What are you guys now telling your opinion? What do you tell a child now to keep them inspired, keep them motivated, keep them in school, keep them out of jail? What do you tell them when all of this other stuff is going on? Well, I always try to – I actually spoke to um, the um, a high school maybe a couple of weeks ago here in New York um, at Landmark. I spoke at Landmark High School, and, you know – I'm not the kind of person that can sit up here in front like I know everything about civil rights. Mm -hmm. I'm not the kind of person that can sit up here in front like I know everything about education. Like I took my education personally that serious. But as I look back as an older man who was actually just blessed enough to be friends with Tariq Trotter and Amir Thompson and The Roots. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. To be blessed with the work with an organization like that. Um outside of that, my education was definitely sacrificed for hip hop, sacrificed for what I thought was important. So when I told this kids, I said, look. All the thing I'm going to tell y'all is educate yourself. Now, if you don't do it here, do it somewhere. Because um, every time like I go into a different business venture or anything like that, um, uh, people are applying business practices that they've known and mastered. Well, all this stuff is new to me. Yeah. And it's like on-the-job training. So I said, look, either educate yourself here. If you want to be in the streets, educate yourself on the streets. If you want to be in music, educate yourself in music. Just don't allow yourself to be victimized by not knowing. You know what I mean? Yeah. On any level, and that's the first things first. Is like, uh, even with Michelle's book, uh, I played the audio book for the the everybody I used to feature on the album was a, a felon. So when I played the audio book for those brothers, these are guys who were getting locked up every month, every yeah. three months, every two weeks, six months, seven months, eight years, ten years. I mean, some of these brothers, we did a count in the room of six brothers who did a hundred. And was it 110 years yeah. in jail? Uh, cumulatively, wow. like together. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it was just it was just nutty. So, but after they listened to the book and Michelle's book, and they got inspired, none of those brothers have been arrested since. They they, they didn't return. The Jimmy's back um, album by Dice Raw, but you can also uh, find it uh, being performed in the last Jimmy, which is a musical that's going to be um, um, opening day is actually the 18th of March. And uh, the 18th through the 21st of March at the Prince Music Theater in Philadelphia, PA. Uh huh. Uh, Eight o'clock showtime. Showtime. And that's that right. The Black Prince at the Prince. I'll be there. All right. That's Dice <laughs> Raw, and that's the one only Phil Brown. Tracy G, you got a question? Yeah, I definitely want to hear your guys' um, views on Geraldo Rivera, you know, esteemed broadcast journalist, and he had some really polarizing comments where he said that hip hop is worse than racism. Mm. Is there any truth, even if there's like a smidgen of truth? How do you guys feel about it? 
Well, me personally, um, Geraldo is Latino, so I can't get too mad at him. Mm -hmm. Um, The one thing that I do agree with him on is how damaging the hip-hop message has got. And when I talk about just thinking about hip-hop just in the last 15 years from 2015 to 2000, how much has changed and how much the gangster narrative has kind of drowned out every other form of black expression, not just in Mm hip-hop, but in R&B, in television, and film. I mean, even to the show Empire, which I think is a great show. Shout out to my little brother, Yaz the Greatest, Brashear. Um, You know, he's from Philly. Uh, But Terrence Howard, his character, plays a former drug lord who became a hip-hop mogul. Now, that's not a real business model for everybody. You can't become a drug lord first and then (laughs) survive the drug game. Not go to jail, get out, then be- or 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 uh, get locked up, get out, and then take. Over. It's like that doesn't happen for everybody, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I think kids look at that as a business model. I also think uh, the the bitches ain't shit narrative is is is, is heavy in hip hop and has mm-hmm. destroyed uh, the romance element, you know, and not just in hip hop but in R and B and um, even the show Power, for instance. You have another black male who is. Um, he speaks different languages. Mm-hmm. He runs multiple different businesses. But yet the the thing that supports most of his businesses and his his supporting narrative on that show is he's a drug dealer. Yeah. Mm. And it's like, well, wait, 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 wait. This brother is multifaceted, multi so super complex. And the only thing you mean to tell me he can think of is to sell selling co- cocaine? Co- nah, I, I'm not buying that. Yeah. I'm not buying that. Um the other thing is um, you know, even with soul singers back in the day, they used to sing about uh, everybody plays the fool, you know. Uh, not, not everybody was a player or just pouring champagne on a woman. So it's like you listen to the rappers, like yo, bitches ain't shit, bitches ain't shit. Pop the champagne, fuck these hoes. Then you turn on an R and B singer, and you hear the same thing. Right. <laughs> like oh, yo, yeah. like melody. Like what? What just happened here? So it's, I think that I don't. I wouldn't necessarily say uh, rap music is damaging as racism, but what it does. Okay, for instance, like um, with the phones. And the hip hop and the music that comes out now is is not an even playing field. That's what I'm just trying to say. Yeah. Uh, and Heather, you know, being down with Karis one for years, it's like you know he was the teacher. Mm-hmm. Mm. There is no teacher today mm. in hip hop. You had Humpty Hump who wore a fuzzy nose and a mustache who danced around and said, "Yo, you fat? I'm skinny. Yo, it doesn't matter. Let's get busy. Let's have fun." Mm-hmm. And it wasn't. You had Kid and Play. You still had Coogee Rap. You still had N.W.A. It was the Coogee Rap and N.W.A. still had respect for Tribe Called Quest. So they have respect for De La Soul because they were not afraid to be themselves and that was what was really gangster to them. Yeah. You know, uh, the, uh, Just Dice, you know, he was the gangster. He always said, yo, but believe me, that is no fun. But now it's like the gangster's like, yo, it's nothing like being a gangster. Yeah. I love it. I wake up. I just want to be a fucking gangster. Fuck these niggas. And that's the thing. It's the, the narrative, I, I feel like... We in love with the Coco, basically. We in love, yeah. we're in love, yeah, we're in love with the Coco. You know what I'm you know, saying? Yeah. Um, exactly. So. You know, um, you know that's interesting because we had DJ Carnage uh, come up, a friend of ours, and I was asking about Kendrick. There, there are some teachers, like I think J. Cole is a... Oh, J. Cole is, is a teacher. Is I think Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar's that, you know, album was classic. Whether they want to be teachers or not, they, right. they are. They're, they're teaching, Absolutely. you yeah. know, and yeah. they're creating a balance that I think is necessary, and, and it's great to see J. Cole have so much success mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. process of doing, doing it and being autonomous at the same time. Um, but the you know Carnage made an interesting statement yesterday, and I was like, you know, I said you got on the album. He said I got everybody, and I said we got Kendrick on the album, and he said, Nah, man, I I, I don't need a dictionary. I don't want to have to have a dictionary when I'm in the club, mm. you know. So I'm not really about the lyrical thing. A lot of folks, and no knock on him, but a lot of folks don't want to hear a message in the music. You yeah, know? and that's sad because I mean that that just says says a lot about who's listening, and um. I think that, you know, black America, first and foremost, black males, we need to make education important. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like you don't need a dictionary to listen to Kendrick Lamar. He's it's like to say that to me is somebody who's really not listening. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? They just have a perception of what they feel is, is different. You know, like jiggy rappers or quote unquote street rappers have a different perception of rappers who are conscious, you know. Yep. But at the end of the day, when I think about the two rappers <laughs> let me take that back, two rap the two rap uh, narratives that are in the hip hop that have been in the game the longest, when I have that are still making records and still relevant, I can only think of two. 
that have just Jay Z and Nas. Or, well, I mean, Jay Z and Nas, they're iconic. Okay, they're iconic, right, super well, iconic. They're never going out. I'm talking about underground rappers who were looked at as people who, you know, who couldn't eat without per diem. You know okay, what I'm saying? Right, in the early right. '90s, yeah. When we was grinding in the early '90s, yeah. Us, like, when you think about Common yep. and the Roots. Oh my gosh, yeah. Now look at the let's look at the longevity in that. Yeah. Let's look at the let's look at the positive, the the uh, the the, uh, the positive message that they carried that was consistent, and let's look at everybody else mm -hmm. and where they all ended up at. Yeah. Since the roots and common since common been in the game because he been in the game longer, longer than the roots. Yeah. Right. So since common been in the game, yeah. Yeah, common, look how many kings of hip hop has been. Yeah. That would destroy a game that we can't even think of their names right now. That are so unrelevant and so far away from winning an Oscar. Yeah, it's Ooh. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We got um, Tony on the line from Seattle. Tony, what's up, man? Good Say morning, hello to Tony. Phil Brown and Dice Raw. Go qu real what's quick. Up, what's your question, Tony? Yeah, yeah, real quick, real quick. You guys bringing up a lot of great issues, but uh, I just wanted to ask them what they thought about these for-profit jails. And I mean, some of these jails are publicly traded stocks, and, and what they think about the impact that that has. Obviously, there's major, many impacts angles, but I'm just curious about the thoughts on that. Yeah, well, I mean, I think privatized prisons is, is ridiculous, and I think that should be illegal, to be honest with you. I think the, 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 to be able to, to build a prison and profit from it, from cheap inmate labor, from people who are basically broken people who broken, you know, laws that were put in place by society and not really given a second chance or not even being bored in to be re rehabilitated and poured back into society, they're being arrested and charged for crimes just so they can be put to work. And that's basically slavery by new name. And, and to that, you know, with we we all know that the system has really been designed to um, to target the black male, right, and people of color, right. And so that's not new, really, in 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 our our, our culture here in America. And I think what the play actually does is it points out the nefarious penal system, but but at the same time, it empowers the individual person, the black man to make a choice, to enlighten his mind, change his heart, to control his destiny and not say, oh, well, because everything's set up against me, I'm doomed. Yeah. So we're actually, you know, we're, we're, we're shining light on the, the injustices, but at the same time, I think, and more importantly, we're empowering the brothers to understand that, listen, the only way true change will happen is if within this chaos and within a world that's, that's against us, we make the positive choices to educate ourselves, to help our brothers, you know what I mean? And to love our families. Mm -hmm. Because, the, and, and you know, the sisters say, well, where's the sisters in the play? Because there's, all, there's lots of brothers in the play. And, you know, we, we respond, hey, listen, until the brothers really get ourselves together and we get straight on who we are, we can't lead and guide our sisters in our, in our, in our homes, in our communities, the way they need to be led. And that's just that's just real talk. I mean, the construct of the family is just broken down to that point. Sway. But but that's dealt with in the play as well. That's I dealt with in the play. Uh, the last Jimmy, Google it, find out when it's near you, because I'm sure it's going to travel. And just hearing what you were saying, Phil, I was just thinking of the Kendrick record, the, uh, the Black of the Berry. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, and I Ooh. think he confronts that issue. <laughs> and it's, it's interesting, you know, of us taking, you know, mm -hmm. within all of this chaos, you know, making the right decisions and right choices. He, he, I think he confronts that in um in his lyricism and and he even got backlash for that you know yeah. uh, we yeah. got Dr. Chris Miles on the f on phone from Alabama what's up Doc how you doing? Good morning to you all man. Good, Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you so much for taking my call. Uh, listen, I'm actually the first time caller. Um, I'm just in agreement with uh, the young man that you have on. Uh, I have to say, being his name's Dice Raw. Dice Raw. That's and his Phil name. Brown. Yep, and Phil Brown. <laughs> okay. Okay. Being from Alabama, man, you, everybody know the history of this place. Uh, racism, rap music has become racism. As the guy before me was talking about the penal code system, if you look at the uh, the dynamics of what this thing is today, rap music actually lead our kids into the prison system, man. Hmm. So uh, in closing, let me just say this. Please keep this conversation going. Because, uh, you know, kids have to be able to understand, to be able to differentiate between what's fact and what's nonfiction. You understand what I'm saying? And um, uh, I'm sorry, what's fiction and what's nonfiction. Yeah. The point is, is this. We have to change the narrative. We got to take back the narrative. Well, hip-hop is not what it used to be, man. Uh, you got these guys coming out of Atlanta, Future, and all these other guys, man. What's this guy, Young Thug? Man, we got to get away from that, man. That's not hip-hop. I didn't come up in that era, man. You know, so please, man, keep the conversation going, man. 
Thank you so much for taking my phone call. All right. Thank you very much. I mean, you got to, it's always been the balance. I think it's the balance that has to be pushed forward. Yeah. I mean, young thug has a right to create. Exactly. Future does too. He's a young brother. He deserves to make money and be out there and express how he feels the way he wants to express it. At the same time, we as the consumer need to uh, pressure other artists to, to be themselves. Yeah. And not follow what they think is going to be a hit. Now, if that's you and that's how you feel, then express yourself. You know, as, as a black male, I mean, I support all of it. You know what I mean? There it is. Phil Brown, Dice Raw. Thank you for coming by, man. Thank you, Thank you. Last Thank Jimmy you, is the musical. You guys Google it. Look it up. Uh, maybe hit these guys up on social media as well. Y'all got a yep. Facebook for this and all that? Yep. yep. You know, the Last Jimmy at Twitter, uh, the Last Jimmy Facebook, and at Dice Raw. Is, is my Twitter handle okay. and uh, Instagram, The Real Dice Roll. All right, Phil, pleasure to meet you. I'll be at the yeah. opening day, okay? Nice to meet you too, All right. Thank should you. I wait for the second showing, maybe? or should Yeah, because you, you're going to be, be a South Texas, by right. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Thank you, Dice. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.